Okay, so today is another workday in my life vlog and I know I filmed a few previous ones but you guys mentioned in the comments that you did want to hear a bit more about the projects that I work on at work. So I do want to share a little bit of that at a high level for confidentiality's sake but also I don't really have that many projects rather than ad hoc requests that come into my team's mailbox. So I do think that's a pretty common trend. There are some teams in cybersecurity or in general that are project-based and project-led and that's how they move forward with their goals for the year. But for my team, and I would think most security analyst type teams, we basically have a mailbox and a lot of the work that we do is BAU or business as usual. And it's taking in requests, questions, alerts, anything that comes into our mailbox. Uh, it could be anything, honestly. Uh, anytime someone emails our mailbox, we just get that request and we deal with it as we may. But yeah, it's very interesting in that way because it kind of makes every day kind of different because you're getting different types of requests, but also because a lot of the requests are new to me, but not to anyone else on my team. So yeah, that is my life right now, but I definitely will try to go into more depth with some of these things. Also wanted to show you guys some of the cookies that we got last night and my existential crises notes to myself if you're ever interested in reading those. But yeah, I already ate some, so they look kind of gross, but you can tell which one's my favorite. Now, I think this one is Nutella s'mores. This one is just normal s'mores. And this one was the Fruity Pebbles one with white chocolate chips, which was amazing. And sorry, I just, I just got you guys, but yeah, these were so good. I got these last night at like 9 a.m. Or I got these last night ordered, delivered at 9.30 p.m. This is adulting, I guess. Okay, so I know I mentioned that I I'm working on a bunch of different security requests but my team is also trying to expand on the things that we can work on and we basically have like side projects that we might want to work on and one of my things or skills i guess i'm bringing to the team is my coding and scripting and i'm telling you that stuff really follows you everywhere yeah basically a lot of the python scripting i was doing in my previous role may or may not be helpful in my current role we don't really we don't really have any specific coding projects yet but at some point maybe maybe scripting different things for vulnerabilities or red teaming type activities or just basic automation maybe something i might be doing and i did have python installed in my work computer so that's what i was doing this morning and i mean honestly it's pretty quick nowadays pretty easy to download things i remember when i was a kid basically and i had to download like a two gigabyte game and i used to play a lot of mmorpgs and those would take three hours, four hours to download. And now it takes me just about under a minute to download any application from the internet, usually about a minute. And yeah, times it's crazy how times have changed. But of course my first computer was a Windows XP from like 1997 or something. So, and that computer was basically as old as I was. Anyways, this isn't a video on me reminiscing on old games I used to play, but if anyone has played a MMORPG called Mabinogi, that's the one that I played by Nexon. They also made Maple Story, which I believe is more popular, but I really like Mabby. It's sometimes I still play um, if I have some time, but it has a very special place in my heart. All that to say, I think Python is a pretty good language to learn if you guys if you guys are trying to get into scripting and whether it's scripting for red teaming, automation, any kind of exploitation, Python is pretty nice because it's super lightweight. You don't need anything besides your Python script if you only want that one Python script file. And of course, JavaScript is another good option, but I just think Python is actually easier to learn, even though you guys know I didn't do well on my first Python class, but now I've come to appreciate it a lot more. And for any front-end developers, I'm so sorry, but I'm definitely not a front-end person and JavaScript never has looked pretty to me. It's always been very like, it's always been a little bit hard to read just because I'm not used to JavaScript syntax. Most of my experience is in backend, kind of full stack, but not really. Yeah, so mostly C Sharp and Java are my strongest languages, I would say. And then now Python, I'm getting into, but you know, I've only done it in one job and taken maybe one or two classes in it, but definitely not as experienced in Python compared to C Sharp, Java. And I've also never really been into front end languages. I've tried a bit of Angular, never really been a huge fan, but I know some people who are amazing at front end, and I could never. Even CSS kind of kicks me in the butt. So yeah, kudos to you guys who are front-end wizards. But yeah, for scripting, Python, JavaScript are good options, especially if you're trying to get into cybersecurity and want to do coding or want to be scripting. Those are probably your those are probably good options to start with and then and then maybe you can go on to more complex or niche languages as you wish. I 
so it's about 11 30 heading towards lunch i don't know if i mentioned before but i typically log in around 9 a.m and because my team is a fully remote team all of us work different hours kind of but i'm definitely a late riser compared to the rest of my teammates who are early birds and yeah so i typically log in around 9 a.m and i typically log off around 5 or 6 p.m so pretty typical work day i would say but one thing i did want to kind of share was that since our job is really requests based obviously we always have requests in our mailbox or our queue but sometimes we might be waiting on someone's approval or someone's feedback or someone to get back some piece of information that we need and during that downtime is really just studying time i guess not really studying but more like reading news or digging deeper into different security policies that our company has it really is kind of like school in a way where you have assignments which are those requests in our mailbox but then you also have like random hacker news or maybe security alerts that you might get on your own those are all things that you're just reading up on on the job so it kind of combines cyber intelligence in that way i feel like i've never had to do this in my previous role but now in this role it's kind of my job to also keep up with cybersecurity news much more i would say than in my previous role because because back then even if i read articles there was nothing i could do to impact anything about them like for example the log4j attack because i wasn't personally impacted by it i really had nothing to fix it was the incident response team that went off and did all that asked f teams to make the changes tracked the changes chose the best remediation for those things but in this case our team is very involved with that process if any vulnerabilities or exploits are found in the wild then they may or may not impact our team so so we definitely are much more hands-on or at least i feel a much more hands-on and even if i'm not actively taking part in remediating certain things it's really just being kept in the loop of what development teams are doing and how they're planning on going about it and another question that i got in my comments was one of you asked me what my experience was like moving from the red team to the blue team and i had never really thought about it in that way that i was that i was kind of switching from offensive to defensive security but of course i was in a rotation program so i was only in one offensive security team and that was my junior pen testing team now switching over i guess you would say is a blue team since it's definitely not red team but i can also see aspects of my team that may also be considered red team it definitely is a blurred line there i would say yeah i would love to make a video on the transition from junior pen testing to now taking like security requests and different things like that so i'll definitely try to make a video on that experience especially for some of you who may be interested in switching from red team to blue team or even blue team to red team and just the transferable skills that i've noticed yeah i also just filled out a kind of weekly report for my team and it's kind of like a daily stand-up but not done every day and we just write down the things we've been working on which is pretty nice but yeah that's probably about it for my morning so i'll talk to you guys after we pick up some lunch <music> Right, quick update on our moving progress so we have our og boxes now we have these extra boxes yeah my desk is also very much clear in my opinion um there used to be so much other stuff but most of this stuff is just like my daily headphones car keys and then makeup stuff and then of course my cookies and yeah and then look this desk cat and everything else is just stuff that we're still using what are you doing <laughs> I didn't tell him to do this, guys. He, he's just doing this. <laughs> what are you doing? All right, time to watch. <laughs> Anyways, um, boxes. This stuff, like, a lot of this stuff is stuff that we can't pack away. Um, like, the cat stuff, those probably aren't going to go in boxes. They're just going to be, you know, in the U-Haul that we move with. And the cat beds, yeah, they're also not going in boxes. And then out in the hallway, we also have boxes packed. Boxes all along there. We're mostly done, I think. And this is actually where Koji sleeps. I don't know if I showed you guys this before, but he sleeps right in the hallway on a suitcase. And this is his spot. But also I think he um, likes his own personal space. <laughs> so oh, he likes the reflection of my camera. Yeah, he really loves shoulder scratches. Yeah, we're making pretty good progress with our fridge stuff. We have so much coconut water. I did not realize how much coconut, wa coconut water that we had. Yeah, this is what you call lifestyle inflation, guys. I did not use the stove one time. I bought all these eggs, but now we're just gonna move them with us because I did not touch any of them. But yeah, basically this whole week has been raining, so lovely weather, of course. And we just ordered some lunch and got, I believe we got Korean takeout food. I've never, this is the only place I've seen with actual Korean takeout. I just got some dumplings and then Luca got some bulgogi. And I don't have too big of an appetite because I was eating cookies this morning, which probably wasn't the best idea. But yeah, tonight we're gonna go out for dinner at this place nearby. Well, that's actually not that 
close to us, but we're gonna drive and head out and it's gonna be Japanese food, so I'm very excited for that. I'm really into udon and basically noodle soup type dishes that are Asian. So Japanese, Korean soup, Chinese noodle soup, very, very good. I've been very into that. I'm excited for that tonight. I think they have a shrimp tempura udon, which an udon is just a thick noodle for anyone who isn't familiar with udon. Yeah, that is what our day is gonna look like. But of course I have a bunch of work to finish this afternoon. And then I also have a good amount of meetings. So, so I'll talk to you guys when the food actually gets here. A very descriptive sticker. These are beef dumplings. And I think that's some kind of, some kind of dumpling sauce. Okay, so for anyone who wonders what videos I'm watching during lunch, I'm currently watching the Michael Reeves or the interview that he did with Grant Stefan on the Iced Coffee Hour channel or podcast. And I am very much a fan of Michael Reeves and Graham Stefan. So this is a crossover I never expected. I don't know if you guys are in like that whole Twitch streaming world, like Pokimane. And I just couldn't believe that Graham Stefan did videos with Pokimane, Michael Reeves. It's just crazy that so many different areas are overlapping right now. And technology is very awesome for that. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of Michael Reeves. So I'm like about halfway through his video for his interview, basically his origin story and yeah, basically like just what he does. So it's very interesting. If you guys are also into Michael Reeves and want to talk about it in the comments, I would love to discuss that with you guys. <laughs> Luca's desk for a change. The lighting is very different from this side of the apartment just because we're right by the window and it's raining out today. So it's a very blue light compared to this lamp, which I honestly hate lamp lights in my face. You guys already know that if you watched my previous vlogs. But yeah, I just finished my last meeting for today. This one was definitely more of a sit-in call because, because there's an ongoing initiative that someone else on my team is leading and I am taking a small part of that, but it's definitely not to the extent of the lead that's taking on this project. I think one thing to note and that I've noticed just after moving to the New York City area is that I definitely don't really go out much on the weekdays. You would think that if you move to a city that is bigger and has, I don't know, things to do, that you would be like going out and doing stuff. And I really only do that on the weekends. Sometimes I don't even go out on the weekends either. Um, it really depends on what's happening and it just so happens that the last one or two weekends we've had people visit us That's why we did touristy things and went out and went out to try new restaurants and stuff like that, but that's typically not a Normal occurrence, let's say. Yeah, I feel like people pay a good amount of money for rent to be able to live in the city But you really have to take advantage of the social aspects of things that go on in the city All right guys headed out to dinner. This is the OTV. Also did and folded the laundry and here's Bella let me know in the comments if you guys think she looks like a raccoon. Does she look like a little raccoon? Oh, hello. My udon with shrimp tempura. I didn't expect all this extra stuff. But it looks really fancy. And then Luca got a Udon, Udaki Don. So it's like eel. This looks fancy. There you go. Hi guys, we just came back from dinner and it was actually very, very good. Honestly, some of the best Asian food I've had here. Yeah, and that was kind of surprising for some reason because I haven't had that much great food here although maybe i'm being biased because i'm used to living in a place where there's you know asian food right outside so anyways that is off topic but thank you guys so much for joining me on this vlog today i feel like i covered a lot of different things from work and moving and i feel like i'm in a pretty good space compared to a few months ago and i think that's a huge plus you always want to be progressing and I guess feeling happy along the way yeah because one of my big concerns if you guys remember from my i quit video was that I wasn't sure what the work-life balance was gonna look like. Now I can say, at least you know, as of right now, that it's pretty good. It's pretty much comparable to my previous role 
and my team specifically takes it very seriously which is something i really respect and care about but of course like every company right now people are coming and going just because there's so much opportunity and i guess a change in the tides with a lot of companies hiring right now i feel a lot of people especially people that i know as well who are switching teams switching companies switching careers so, so I do think that's definitely something every company in the sector is going to be impacted by. But obviously I do think that's a good thing for you know career growth and uh, just being able to work on something that you care about, which is always a good thing. But as always, let me know in the comments below if there's any specific videos that you might want to see from me. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. Thank you guys again so much for watching and it is raining very hard. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.